at us. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tara Green, and I'm here with Ben Poe. Yeah, and we're making a Whirly Girl stove. We are the best little stove in the whole world. <laughs> yeah. So you right. want to show us what we what the process is so far? Well, yeah. they're made out of these. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're gallon cans, and they're very readily available anywhere you stop, at any restaurant. I get 20 of them a day if I want them. Yep, trash cans. So there's that. So what we started with is this little stencil, put it on top of the can, made some dots to draw our holes, and now we have drawn these lines to mark where we're going to be cutting. And we're making something like this. There's our little yes. model, and you'll see how that comes about. So there, mark the lines. Okay, and what do we do next? Aha! Oh. Take your little hammer and chisel. Okay, and so I just cut it. on all these lines? Yes, and there's a little rocking motion that helps okay. us. We nice. kind of put it in the tip there and put that in there and then rock it that way and then join them and go up nice. right and then keep walking along. Pizza. That is yeah, a good pizza. Pizza, pizza. pizza. pizza can. <laughs> you know why you do that, right? Because you can. <laughs> Make sure he uh, gets. Put that pun in there. <laughs> and that's true. You can. That's be and that's why to do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. You got that right. <laughs> Okay, we probably don't need to record me doing this whole thing. <laughs> so, I don't know if we want to like show you what's next. Is it still paused? Yeah, oh, okay, pause it's until going. You can pause it. And then, once you make all those slits, then you curl it back. Yep. You curl it back, and then you also make these slits all facing the same direction around the side of the can. And that's what creates the swirling vortex, vortex, vortex. effect of the os oxygen coming in, and then the flame starts flow. to spiral up. Yep. And then finally, there's this, we'll get to this later probably, but this little ring in here is so you can remove this from the stove so that you can take the stove and put out the flame without burning yourself trying to grab it. Okay, and do you want to show me sh your can that you just folded back? Nice, very nice. nice. And your can you just nice. folded back? Yes. Okay, and while this is recording, I'm going to show this, sh take it over here, show you this one in action. Here's the Whirly Girl, boiling water. And at the same time, it's making biochar. So, so that's how you, with that stick there, that's how you're able to lift it up. Mm, that's our handle. Oh, nice. Okay. And we can use like material like this, wood chips. I see some nut husks mm -hmm. in there. Uh, yep, acorn and filbert nut husks. Nice. All right. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, freestyle or uh, Make a pattern or anything you're popular. Oh, you know the Smiley face. Yeah. Like, I've been waiting all day for this. I've been nice. thinking about Got it. it. Right. Let's try over here. So are you making the bottom now? Yeah. All right. If you uh, if you can explain a little bit about how you're doing this. Um, Let's see. Yes. Uh, poking some holes in the bottom on this tin here, and we're freestyling them. And yes. these holes in the bottom are for air flow to come in, right? Yeah. Very important uh, function on the stove is the the air comes in from the bottom. 
Yeah, the air yeah. comes in from the oh, bottom. They're called T LUDs. Hey. T L U D top lit updraft stove. So hey. you fill right. the bottom right. with See? wood chips. All right. Fill this half. with wood chips or material. Light it on top, top lit, updraft. Sweet, the got it. The flame burns right, down, right. and as it's burning down, it converts the biomass into charcoal. Awesome. Burning off the gas. Here we're putting the louvers in the side of the chimney to, to create the whirly girl effect. These are high temperature. And it's where this whirly girl effect extends the action or a function of the chimney probably at least twice by spinning the flame and the smoke inside the chimney. And it doesn't go straight up, it, it spirals out. Call, therefore, it's called a whirly girl. Yeah, where they go? There it is. We're gonna, uh, not a very good deal. We're going to cut those little slips. Uh, yeah, it's not. Really, yeah. Pretty yeah. crummy. Pretty I, crummy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show, I'm going to like show this whirl in effect on the stove right here. There's the whirling action. Isn't that amazing? Okay, my name is Ryder Cohen, and uh, we're here talking about continuing the conversation on these Whirly Girl, Whirly Girl biochar cook stoves. And uh, we're in the process of having people make them and going through the demonstration of how to actually make these, and I thought I would just take a moment to talk about fuel sources. So, I have this one filled up with just forest debris, twigs and stuff. These wood pellets will for sure yield the longest burn time. You could probably get about 30 minutes of burn time filling this up with wood pellets. Wood chips like this, this grade, maybe get 15 or so minutes of burn time with the stove. And when you fill it up with twigs and stuff, my, my guess is that you'll get between 8 to 15 minutes of burn time I'd have to do a trial to see um, but yeah I guess I just wanted to talk about the, these three kind of different fuel sources you can use you can get a bag of wood pellets for pretty cheap um, but I think they're kind of like fossil fuel dependent to compress the wood pellets and same with chips um, you know big fossil fuel guzzling machinery to process it into the wood chips for burning so this is the more sustainable option and while you might not be getting as efficient use of the heat the combustion from the twigs as say like a rocket stove that's designed to be really fuel efficient you will be yielding biochar at the same time so depending on what your needs and desires are there's different sorts of like emergency stoves or cook stoves you can use um, so here's my complete whirly girl stove after making uh making this with in Po, I've added a few uh, a little improvements down at the bottom. I've added these washers that help it just like sit sit on here slightly more stably. And then, in a recent visit with Fin Po, he helped me add the skirting, which he just cut with like tin snips and didn't even require any power tools to cut it to the right size. Now, after adding this, there's this inch space that has been made under the bottom so that it can get better airflow. And right now, I'm getting ready to cook dinner on this stove for the second time. My first time, I used it without the skirting and it still worked. I just sat it on pavement, um, parked on a street in Eugene out of my box van and collected little wood sticks that had fallen down along the street from wind and storm. And this time I'm using this big stick that I found, chopping it up into little pieces and we'll see how that works. But it's been working great and with just the, the, the things that I picked up in the streets of Eugene, which was actually a lot of blackberry stems, which are not very woody, they're kind of light. I didn't yield very much biochar, um, probably yield like a fourth of the entire can, but it was enough burn time to boil water and cook rice pasta, so it worked out. And I'm hoping to get a little bit longer of a burn time with this wood, it's 
just a lot. I don't know what kind it is, but it's heavier. So hoping to get a longer burn time and more biochar from this. I hope you enjoyed this video about how to make Whirly Girl stoves. If you decide to upcycle some cans from one of your local dumpsters, I'd be curious to hear about how that works out for you if you have success with your stove. Please remember to like and subscribe and stay wild and free.